thank you for coming as always. And um, welcome to Zurich if you've flown in. Um, I hope you enjoy the event. So uh, this is actually going to be a very, very important, pivotal event in the history of the internet computer. So later today at 6 p.m., I'm going to unveil something, to demonstrate something that is really Internet Computer 2.0. So before we get to that, I, I thought, look, I'm on stage, I'm doing a keynote, I could do slides, I could go over the Internet Computer. Um, you're going to see lots of screens from me later on at 6 p.m. So instead, I realized, look, it's 10 years, exactly 10 years since I created the first Definity website in 2015. Where, yeah, 10 years. Uh, and, and back then, I, I laid out the vision for the Internet Computer 1.0. And, you know, back then, I didn't see that Internet Computer 2.0 would even be possible. And it's incredible that it, it has become possible and we've been given this opportunity. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of a retrospective, just a monologue, an unscripted monologue, um, explaining how we got to Internet Computer 2.0 and just briefly what it is and what you're going to see later today. So the history was I, I kind of pivoted into crypto full-time in 2013. And um, I'd come from, uh, as a serial entrepreneur, what's known as an engineering entrepreneur, like um, Making, making things, and you know, actually I've been in the weeds with Internet Computer 2.0, which is why I've been a bit quiet on social media recently. So uh, I, I'd just come out of, uh, I'd created a computer game that had grown to some millions of users, an MMO, and I'd used a decentralized database. So I, I got interested in this idea that you could take the concept of a blockchain <clears throat> and redesign it reimagine it from first principles so that it would scale uh, without limit and be performant and efficient and so on. Um, and initially it was, you know, I just wanted to create a blockchain that could process hundreds of thousands of transactions a second for the games industry. And uh, I looked at what was around, found that it just wasn't going to solve that problem, and, and I spent 2014 um, just researching classical distributed computing techniques, um, trying to unlock a way of, of doing this. And that, that got me involved with the early Ethereum project before launch. And at some point, you know, there was this incredible phrase, world computer. So, um, you know, it just like st struck me right in the eyes, like, world computer, yeah, that's what the, the world needs. Um, you could build on the internet, right? Wouldn't that be cool? And if we could find a way of making this technology scale and be efficient and performant, then you could build apps that uh, were immune to cyber attack, uh, which were tamper-proof, essentially, and which would be unstoppable, would be guaranteed to run. Um, and their data would always be available and so on and so forth. And this would be a great advance. Plus, of course, people would be building on the internet on a public overlay network rather than on, on some proprietary stack. So I thought, you know, these are seminal problems in tech, you know, security, resilience, um, not being beholden to some platform provider. So... Uh, you know, I, I began direct, directing my efforts towards it. And originally, back in 2015, 10 years ago, when I created that first uh, website, um, I, I was really thinking about this as like Ethereum, an Ethereum 2.0 or an Ethereum 3.0. But it became apparent there'd be so much R&D work necessary to, to get to this, what's now the Internet Computer 1.0 vision, that it had to be its own project. So I put a team together in 2016. Uh, February 2017, uh, just after 
uh, we'd created the uh, foundation, I think in October 2016, we ran uh, the public ICO. Uh, ICP was sold at three cents, um, which is incredible if you think about where it is now. And we started scaling out very aggressively because we knew how much work needed to be done to create an internet computer, a world computer. And by the end of 2017, Definity was running the largest R&D operation in crypto. And it's continued to run the largest R&D operation in crypto ever since, which is, which is quite an achievement. Yeah. And we focused our efforts primarily on R&D. And it took us six years from the creation of that first website in 2015 to launch the internet computer in June 2021. Turns out there are a few people a bit worried about the status quo and this idea of uh, an internet computer that had all the properties of a blockchain that was efficient and scalable and so on. <clears throat> And we went through some big bumps in the road. Um, but interestingly, it remains the case today that while other blockchains can only process tokens, really, and you know, even when you see things like NFTs, that's just a link to an, an image that typically lives on Amazon Web Services. And when someone says a service is on-chain, it really is running on Amazon Web Services. And on-chain means it has an associated token. Um, the internet computer still stands alone. Uh, in its ability to host sophisticated apps and, and act as a full stack environment. So you can create an internet service, an app, um, with the internet computer and you don't need anything else. And that thing will run on a decentralized network, be tamper-proof, be unstoppable, and it'll scale if you design it right. And that remains completely unique. Um, traditional blockchains still can't even store a photograph taken with a phone. So, you know, we've taken the world from blockchains that process tokens only to a place where a blockchain can host a social network end to end. That's where we are today. So, we haven't been, um, we haven't ever stopped improving Internet Computer 1.0, there's been a lot of developments. Um, some of the recent ones I'll mention include ChainKey uh, Crypto, which enables the Internet Computer to host um, tokens on traditional blockchains. So for example, you can uh, put your Bitcoin onto the Internet Computer and transfer it in under a second at near zero cost. Um, another one would be VET keys, um, which are coming along, which will enable you to encrypt the content in your apps so that the network only has an encrypted content of your data. So the internet computer, unlike other blockchains, does provide a fair degree of privacy already because your data is only replicated across these node machines run by node providers. And I should, of course, mention the node providers. There are around 100 of these um, companies, people uh, around the world that run the machinery that hosts the internet computer. So there's a fair degree of privacy because you can't get onto these node machines um, where your data and computation is replicated. But with that keys, um, even if you could physically get onto these machines, you still wouldn't be able to get to the data because it would be encrypted. Um, so. There's a lot of these kind of advances, and a lot of advances that you, you, you can't necessarily see. Um, for example, behind the scenes, there's been all kinds of important performance improvements over the years, scalability improvements, things like that. Um, you know, the internet computer is composed of subnets, and that's how it scales horizontally. Um, well, what happens when a subnet gets overloaded? How do you deal with that situation? Well. Today, the internet computer can actually split a subnet into two new subnets to halve the load. There's a bunch of stuff like that that really is kind of invisible. And more recently, of course, um, we uh, have supported AI. So 
uh, of course, naturally, uh, internet computers are the only blockchain that can actually run AI in the mode of smart contracts. And this is an incredibly important thing, too. I mean, you can get security from inference. You can get security from the data that's used in inference um, by running RAG on the internet computer. Um, and so, so it goes. The internet computer is a kind of blockchain that provides centralized serverless cloud functionality. And there's a lot of interesting dimensions to that, too. Um, we've pioneered a system where, when you write code, the difference between uh, data and logic has kind of collapsed. So the data lives in the logic. And it turns out that's also a very, a very important part of Internet Computer 2.0, because um, it enables, or is part of the system, the, the framework that enables AI to do incredible things. So um, I think what everyone's excited about later, all right, yeah. So Internet Computer 2.0, what on earth could it be? Well, I think AI running on the internet computer is actually still internet computer 1.0. It's just the internet computer running um, yet more computationally in intensive um, processes as smart contracts. But internet computer 2.0 relates to something that um, I've been calling the self-writing internet. And the vision um, for the self-writing internet is that, that in the future, you will talk to AI and describe functionality in the forms of apps and services that you want. And they will materialize on a URL. So it's a very broad paradigm. And, and we think that you know, in the future, people will think about stacks differently. A stack will be a self-writing platform where anybody using only natural language will be able to create what they need, what they dream of, what they want to make money from, used to be industrious, whatever they need. And to be clear, this is kind of different. Self-writing is different to vibe coding. Vibe coding, I've been doing a lot of vibe coding recently, actually. Um, vibe coding is when, as an engineer, you work in partnership with AI, which writes some of your code and debugs it and so on. Um, but you still have to be an engineer. And in fact, you need to be a pretty good engineer if you want to really make use of it. Um, Self-writing is a different paradigm where anybody without technical skills can create what they want using just their natural language. And that can be anything from you know, personal branding website or wedding planner, something simple, um, to completely new things, which we'll look at later. It can be something used in business, can be something in Web3, created by a Web3 entrepreneur. It can be something used by large corporation or government, such as a CRM. And why is this important? Well, uh, I think this is what's going to decentralize access to tech and enable so many people to get the functionality they need. Um, and, and don't forget, in, in some parts of the world, uh, it's very, very difficult to create IT systems. You haven't got engineers to build stuff. Um, and even if you could build stuff, you don't have the people that, that could keep it secure. So there's large parts of the world that are absolutely crying out for this functionality. But it's also something that will enable, I think, all kinds of other transformations in terms of how we use the internet, the kind of services we use, 
um, entrepreneurialism, agility of business, and things like that. And why is it going to be very important for the internet computer? Well, I think one of the challenges that we face uh, is that the internet computer is kind of intangible in a sense. And I think that applies to the whole blockchain industry. Um, it started off as a very technical place. But over time, people realized that, hey, um, nobody can really distinguish between technology and narratives. And look, maybe the token is the product, right? And became very speculative. Um, and so the internet computer, like, kind of, the kind of project that invests all this time in R&D and so on kind of sometimes gets forgotten, even though, you know, we're already topping the charts often with developer numbers. Um, and, you know, today and sometimes, you're, well, today I think we're processing like seven, 800,000 Ethereum equivalent transactions a second. Well, Ethereum's probably processing, you know, I don't know, 20 or something. And sometimes it's processing, you know, Ethereum equivalent, Ethereum equivalent transactions in, in the millions. So, I mean, network usage has grown enormously. Developer community has grown enormously. Um, but Internet Computer 2.0 is something very, very different because it's something that's tangible. For the first time, the full power of the Internet Computer will be tangible to everybody in the world. Everybody who's got an internet connection. Anybody with an internet connection will be able to connect to the self-writing internet and create. And we believe that as a result, we'll quickly see the number of developers on the internet computer soar into the millions. And we'll see apps on the internet computer soar into the millions. Um, and when you put that in perspective, I think there are 35,000 Web3 developers in the world today. But this is going to bring a huge amount of people in. And of course, that's important for the health of the network. Um, last year, the, the, the network's token, which drives the economy, um, went deflationary a few times, owing to growth in the computation being performed on the network. But it's, it's certainly true that in terms of driving the economy, scaling out the underlying hardware in the network and things like that, um, Internet Computer 2.0 could, could prove quite magical. So I'll, I'll leave you with that and hopefully see you all at 6 to uh, give you a demo and show you what this is all about. Thanks. Oh.